This episode brought to you by our valued partners. We're in the partners, and you're watching to DX Spotlight. Stop looking at us. Stop.
Welcome to PDX Spotlight. I'm your host, Luke Neal, coming to you live from the Hawthorne Theater with Thank You Scientists. Thanks so much for being on the show. Hey. <laughs> so obviously you have elements of funk and jazz and prog rock. Where's the intersection come from? Like, who brought in the prog rock side of, of the sound that you have? I think it's just no one, there's no one that really listens to one kind of music or one, or wants to make one kind of music. Sure. So it's more like, if you hear something cool, let's try to do it and filter it through whatever sounds yeah, it's, we it's have. It's really just the sound of like everybody in the room and like what we all collectively listen to. And like everybody hears something differently, everybody listens from a different perspective. And I think that's what makes it kind of, you know, different and unique is that we're, we're all kind of just, we don't aim to do one specific thing. It's just whatever we like. We want to create the music that we like, so. Yeah. So let's talk about a typical jam session. How does that start? Do, is there someone in particular that brings in ideas or are you just spending time in the studio making arrangements and, and writing these? Oh, we're, we're definitely like a arranged before the studio type band. I can mm -hmm. say that. And the songs vary. A lot of the songs were all of us in a room together shooting around ideas. Yeah. Some songs one particular member will bring something in and we'll flesh it out. Um, it just really depends song to song. But it definitely everything always goes through the everyone filter. Everyone in a room. We never like it's never like sort of here's the arrangement and it stays. Like even if it's something that I brought in or something, everybody, it, it totally mutates because everybody throws in, you know. Well, you have a fan favorite, uh, Mr. Invisible. It's got a ton of plays and a lot of chatter from fans. Uh, for me, I would say that was, is probably like the best introductory song for folks who aren't familiar with your music. It has a little bit of everything. Um, let's talk about the new music and the new single. Are the tunes heading in a similar direction? Where do you think your music's going from something like that? It's a hard question. Uh, I think we tried to be more dynamic and sort of expand the scope of the you know genre bending stuff, and also, but at the same time, make it more cohesive and uh, try to write with intention and keep things focused. Whereas, like when you're writing prog music, you can kind of just go off and make it ridiculous and sure. over the top. So we're, we tried to like reel it in where we felt it needed to be reeled in, but then also like expand the technical aspects where we wanted to do that. So it's kind of just expanded in all directions, sort of. And I would say in terms of like comparing to Stranger Heads Prevail, it's like more of like a lively record, not necessarily upbeat because there's like a lot of, you know, the lyrics are kind of all over the map, that's Sal's territory, but I, I would definitely say it's more like lively and fun. Um, it's got a lot of variation for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the main uh, goal going into it was kind of... More energetic, I guess, is a good word. More energetic and uh, just taking more left turns conceptually instead of like all within one piece of music. Right. Like, I, uh, from joining the band after Stranger Heads, I'm not on that album, um, I feel like a big thing, when things are cra really crazy and technical, it's easy to get exhausted. And so I feel like conscious on all of our parts was to kind of have little detours and things that were maybe deeper in other directions than we normally would have went or would have been done previously and yeah. kind of make it more of a varied record and just very there's like there's we've got a couple like little interludes on there and a couple little strange things where we went a hundred percent in one direction versus where it might have gone you know fifty percent in a direction kind of pushing the envelope always and pushing instrumentation and not limiting it to, you know, the seven of us and the instruments that we play, I think was a big thing also. You do a really good job too. I think you mentioned it earlier, in the prog rock world especially, people can go down the rabbit hole and do 22 minute long songs. And there's great, you know, crowds that appreciate that, musicians who get that, but you'll go through seven and a half minutes, you know, nine minute song, but your melody, there's a, a pop sensibility that becomes familiar but I think you do such a brilliant job, like Mr. Invisible again is a really good example, of introducing the song and, the, and a first listener may go, oh, I, I think they're one thing. And by the time you're four minutes in, you're still guessing and there's just a really nice, uh, you do a good job of keeping your listener engaged. You know, there's so much noise out there. Um, there's a bunch of great musicians, but I think that there's a trick to putting it in a context where it's listenable. Let's talk about forming that. like. What's your average, if you could quantify, how many hours would you put into an arrangement, a song that's nine it, minutes it, long? It, it's it would be really hard to calculate. Really hard, yeah. be, there's a, like, we will work on one song for months sometimes. Yeah. But. And we're also like always rewriting. Like the songs are very fluid in terms of like, if we want to improve something, we finished a song months ago, 
we might say, oh, hey, let's revisit this part. Like we're always tr trying everything to try to really push it, you know, as much as we can. And uh, yeah, we, so we don't really take that. any shortcuts either. Yeah. I mean, we'll be we'll hash out at like one idea that's like 10 seconds long for three hours sometimes yeah. and just make sure that we go through every single possibility until we find like what's the perfect fit for this this yeah. situation we're, we're big we're big on the detail work and i think that is uh what you said about the pop thing i, I think it kind of sh a lot of us don't listen to exclusively prog like we listen to a lot of other things all of us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all of us uh and like i listen to a lot of pop music and i think all of us do and I don't even really listen to Prague or really like Prague that much. <laughs> so I think censored. <laughs> bleep, bleep Prague. So Except with, with definitely with exceptions. There are some Prague bands that I absolutely love. I think a lot of it uh, comes from the fact that besides from myself, everyone is in this band is very good musicians. And so it's kind of like you get that that option paralysis kind of thing where it's like these guys can play most things that you throw at them. So it's kind of like when you can do those things, it's kind of just like, what do we want to do? And what you want to do is play music that everybody likes and that you enjoy listening to versus, you know, yeah. this is what I can do and this is... Yeah, just making sure that there's intention, you know? That was, that was always the goal from when I formed the band is trying to make songs, not like make, dis like the, the technique and stuff isn't like, it's just a means to an end. It's not like the means to its, in itself, I guess. And um, yeah, we, like that was always from the square one. We wanted to write songs. Yeah, all, all the tunes really, with, exce with exceptions, but all the parts can pretty much be boiled down to just chords and a melody, yeah. um, like all the vocal parts for sure. sure. You know, some of the, the more rhythmic, you know, like the, the techie parts, yeah, that, you know, that's just a riff or whatnot. But, um, but yeah, just keeping, you know, the vocal melody in mind and placed on top when it's present, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, that's kind of like a staple to uh, the writing process. And with, with as much pre-production and thought that you put into your music, who are you trusting to engineer, record, produce uh, your projects? Who are you working with on this? Uh, pretty our, much our just father uh, Mike. Mike Ferretti, yeah. yeah. He, he really did almost everything on this record. Wow. I mean, we did some, some sessions, like very limited other stuff. Uh, we did some recording on our RV. We do some stuff by ourselves, but Mike really did like 99.9 percent. That's yeah, that's yeah. one patient man. He's that's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. Some of like he puts up with a lot, mm -hmm. and he does an amazing job. And he's and he did Stranger Heads also. So we've, oh, cool. we've worked with him quite a bit. Yeah. I think the big part of it with with Mike and with any good engineer is kind of kind of taking some of the reins and deciding some like of what your best take is and certain things from an outside perspective. Because when you're looking at all the minutia and little tiny details and looking like, before we went to the studio, we're like charting the songs out so we know if there's any weird notes and doing all this stuff. So I feel like letting someone from the outside look into it and be like, this was a really good take you did, mm -hmm. but maybe that wasn't what you intended to do. Mm -hmm. But finding those little things, because you're so used to hearing it one way, that I think Mike does a really great job of that. How do the songs evolve on the road for you guys? Do you find yourself having a lot of fun with different arrangements after the record's out? Um, I, I do. I, I think on an overall scale, the arrangements stay mostly the same um, because they're already pretty complex uh, unless we really decide like we want to change something. Um, but I, you know, I play the parts differently every night depending on cool. you know, what's going on. Yeah. Got to keep yeah. yourself entertained. Yeah. Do you yeah. ever have fans point it out like, such and such show you did this different than on the record oh yeah sure well, sometimes in general none of us really do the so well, with a few exceptions none of us do our solos the same way we're always improvising and yeah the solos are almost there's a lot of interaction course. between cody and joe and you know every everybody really is like you know kind of feeding off each other there's certain things when you play a same set like a bunch of nights in a row we'll develop like little things like oh i notice joe's playing a certain fill here a certain accent here so i'm gonna lock up with him and you, you, you know you kind of there's a communicative sort of thing like that, a, like yeah. smooth like he smooth. plays the smell, the, the smell, the fill from smooth. In every song. In every song. Smooth by Carlos yeah. Santana featuring Rob Thomas. We try to kind of catch where the fill from smooth is going to land. Yeah. It's right. Kind yeah. of a surprise every night. I mean, because you can't just forget about it. You can't just forget about it. I mean, it's uh... <laughs> <laughs> The lyricist was like, yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 I see you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think it's, for me, it's almost a lot more difficult to play things exactly the same every single night it's almost like if i did that it would i i would need to focus more and this way i can just kind of have more fun and keep keep everyone on their toes and uh yeah. if i had to play the same thing every night i would have to be heavily medicated 
Yeah. Very heavily. Mentioned. Yeah. That also works too, I guess, for some I mean, bands. There's also, I feel like, a lot of things that work, uh, work live that don't work in the studio and sure. vice versa. So it's like, yeah. you know, there might be a part where I uh, play the drum fill from Smooth, uh, which should have been on the album. No, not going to point any fingers, <laughs> but it, it might have it been cut on the album. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to do it live, definitely. And to be fair, we have to have Sal sing our songs instead of Rob Thomas, which was kind of a point of contention. But yeah. I know. Yeah. it worked out okay, I guess. I guess. I don't know. A second. <laughs> yeah. uh, so let's talk about the new record, Terraformer. Uh, the first single off of the record, FXM LDR. Is that mm -hmm. okay? That's uh, fun. First of all, really dope artwork. Like shout out to whoever did that. Yeah, song. shampoo. shampoo. Mm -hmm. Really, shampoo. really cool stuff. Um, That's our boy. Great song. This track, especially from an engineering standpoint, is so damn clean. I put on some really nice headphones and super enjoyed it. Um, I'm assuming it's representative of Terraformer. Yeah. What we can expect well, and production-wise, there's a lot of different stuff. So all the songs kind of are treated as their own entity, I guess. So that was, uh, I guess, the first song we wrote together when I joined the band. Yeah. Oh right. And right. I was just like, I was finding my place and all the ideas, because you know, dealing with a band of this size, it's like, was very exciting. And I feel, and that was the first song that we all wrote together when we got back from the first tour, with me and Joe and Sam in the band, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's one of my favorites on the album, and I feel like it uh, represents the album somewhat mm -hmm. in a sense that it's kind of taken a lot. Of, there's definitely a lot of ideas that just naturally, when we were figuring out what we wanted to do with the album and treating all the songs this way, that song kind of got a similar treatment. Are we getting full LP with Terraformer? How many tracks are on the project? It's a, it's a double album, as a matter of fact. It's, wow. It's... 85, 85, 85 minutes, something like that. That's fantastic. It's a lot of music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the Avengers end game of records. It's, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So what do you, uh, do you have plans to press it on vinyl? Because obviously it's oh, yeah. going to be super Yeah, it's coming cool. out. We have a pre-order going on right now for like a special vinyl package, the album that comes with uh, trading cards of us and our dads. That's awesome. And... Uh, Speaking speak about shampoo, others, about, we got, yeah, yeah. speaking of the artwork for FXMLDR, Fox Mulder, uh, the guy who did the artwork is a guy named Shampoo, our friend Kyle, out in Michigan, and uh, we have a 12-page lyric booklet coming with the vinyl. Mm -hmm. He did illustrations for every single song, oh, and cool. they're absolutely incredible. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. Is Max making an appearance in the artwork? He's on the outside sticker, actually. Okay, he's on the yeah. sticker. Cool. Right on. Well represented. Yeah. He's well represented. He's on my kick drum head. Yeah. Right cool. now, he's. We have a big poster with him at the merch table. So, <laughs> he's a hit. Um, what type of fans do you find yourself interacting with? Because we're in the on-demand world. I think it's brilliant that we have access to so many different types of music. I'm sure it's mm -hmm. all over the board. At our show is the women's bathroom. You can kind of see like a tumbleweed <laughs> flowing through sometimes. <laughs> No, well, actually, you know what? To be fair, our audience has gotten like way more diverse. Like yeah. in the in the past, it yeah. really is like it, very it actually, diverse. People has. like a lot of professional musicians like our stuff. A lot of uh, you know, I think everybody just you know, it's kind of cool. Like the the plethora of people that listen to our stuff. One of my favorite things is like the uh, the blue coats that come out, like oh, yeah. from the drum corps. Just mm -hmm. from they did a thank you sign to song, and we did that the new video with them. Yeah. So like they kind of know about us and it's really nice when they come out to the shows. Yeah, because it's Cause a normally, to totally different world for them. It's a different world. It's normally younger kids who are like in this really intense music regimen mm -hmm. and it's just like they always are fun to talk to and uh, different than the usual band which is kind of refreshing. Yeah. So. I just, you know, I look back to the all the prog rock shows I used to go to and the first, I think it was the Dream Theater show. I was like, everyone here is a guitarist. Like, I'm sure everyone here, 90% of these folks own an Ibanez. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but in this day and age, I think that's changed, you know, as I've gone to different prog rock shows over the last 10 yeah, years. Yeah, or, yeah, The audience is definitely Yeah, widening, it's, yeah. it's evolving, and I think that's great. We have, we have access to that now. Um, so let's talk about having access to the band. You all offer lessons while you're on the road to yeah. folks that you can do bundles or individual. Mm -hmm. Who came up with this idea? I think it's super brilliant. I don't know why more bands don't do this. Uh, I mean, there. I've seen other bands doing it, all similar, you know, prog mm -hmm. bands and doing lessons on the road. And all, most of us teach at home too. Yeah. That's like a, a large portion of some, of a lot of our income. Yeah, most so, of us are like freelance musicians back at home. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, that's kind of what we do to make a living, regardless. Yeah, it just made sense to just do it on the road. And we have anyway. a lot of musician fans, and so you know, we notice a lot of people reaching out asking 
So we decided to like kind of codify it into into a thing. That's an awesome opportunity because everyone's got CDs or shirts signed from their favorite band. But if you could actually go and jam with them and learn something, smell from them, them. smell them, yeah. <laughs> so what's on the horizon for you guys after the 2019 tour? You've obviously put some time in. You got the double disc coming out. Mm -hmm. How long are you going to be touring with this thing? Oh, it's we're going to be touring a while. We we generally our album cycles are pretty long. Um, we just like to play a lot, and that's part of the thing. Like we put out long albums. All of our albums have been pretty long, so we do that because, like you know, it gives us time to like write, gives people a lot to digest. But we have a second leg of a tour with Bent Knee uh, coming up in June, which they're really good friends of ours, an amazing band. We're excited about that. And then we're going to Europe to play the Arc Tangent Festival in August. And that's a really cool festival. Um, it's really our first like legit festival as a band. Like generally, we have we haven't really played any major festivals and we're playing main stage with Meshuga and Battles and all wow. these cool bands so uh, it's going to be a blast we're all really excited about it yeah that's yeah. awesome uh, once again I want to thank thank you scientists for being here with us in Portland at the Hawthorne Theater appreciate your time looking forward to the show thank we you we appreciate you Luke thank, thank, thank you Luke
Mm-hmm. <laughs>